having worked on Core Pearl over a few months, I noticed that I was getting better. With, with certain notable exceptions like PHP, uh, evolution usually has ways of taking care of um <laughs> On behalf of the Pearl Foundation, I want to thank everybody for being here today. My name is Daniel Wright. I'm just one of the organizers here that uh, helped to make this event possible, and we truly hope that you have a great time. One of the thir first things I think we need to talk about is the fact that uh, this is no longer YAPSI. This is the Pearl Conference, and I want to take a couple minutes and explain exactly why that is. We gotta take a little uh, history tour here to kind of understand how we got to where we are today. So let's go back to 1997. This is the year that O'Reilly Media launches an event called the Pearl Conference. Yes. Okay. So the Pearl Conference, a great event, very successful, a little bit pricey and located far on the West Coast, which makes it difficult for many people to travel to the event. Nevertheless, in response, in 1999, Kevin Lenzo launches an event called YAPSI, the Yet Another Pearl Conference, a, a name that's in reference both to uh, O'Reilly's Pearl Conference and, of course, the, the, the naming scheme for YAC. Uh, so this launches in 1999, and ironically, the exact same year, O'Reilly decides to rename their event to OSCON. The following year, Kurt DeMagid launches uh, er, the Yet Another Society by filing the incorporation papers for that, and YAPSI EU is established, and such begins the legacy of YAPSIs across the world. Now, somewhere after this period, and I don't know exactly when it happened, people, instead of calling the organization the Yet Another Society, start calling it the Pearl Foundation. A lot of people are very confused about what's the difference between yet another society and the Pearl Foundation. Well, I'm going to answer that right now. There is no difference. They're the same organization with two different names. And the reason for that is because everybody found it kind of annoying to call it the yet another society. The Pearl Foundation is a much more clear name that describes exactly what we do. It doesn't take as much explaining to tell people what that is. Now, up until 2012, the Pearl Foundation was nothing more than a nickname. It, it didn't legally exist. In 2012, the Pearl Foundation finally le legally registers the Pearl Foundation as a business alias for yet another society. And this leads to last year, where there were a number of participants and sponsors that approached the organizers and asked, if yet another society is called the Pearl Foundation, why are we still calling it YAPSI when the thing that we're yet anothering 
hasn't existed for 15 years. And so we agree that it's difficult to have an event called YAPSI because it takes a lot of explaining for anybody that doesn't understand it. So we wanted a more beginner-friendly name. And we approached O'Reilly and said, hey, can we use your name? And they said, well, we haven't used it for 15 years, so go right ahead. And so now we have the Pearl Conference. The same way that Yet Another Society is now the Pearl Foundation, the Yet Another Pearl Conference is now the Pearl <coughs> Conference. Again, this was done primarily to be beginner friendly. And so you might be asking, why, why, why beginner friendly? Why does this matter? Well, it may surprise all of you to learn that we are all, in fact, getting older. In fact, since we met in Salt Lake City, all of us have aged approximately one year. And this, this process of getting older keeps on going. And so we need new fresh blood in the Pearl Foundation. So we need new people to be coming into our Pearl ecosystem and refueling us, essentially. Sponsors need new people because there's only so many times that you can come to the Pearl Conference and see the exact same people and try to recruit somebody new. As an organization, we need new fresh ideas. And the only way to do that is to bring in new people. And so we are making an effort to make YAPSI, excuse me, the Pearl Foundation. We'll, we'll count how many times I make that mistake. We'll keep a count of how many times I, I mess that up. So the, we are trying to make the Pearl Conference beginner friendly. Already, we've seen tutorials from John Anderson and Damian Conway and through sponsorship from Infinity Interactive and Craigslist, respectively, we've been able to offer training, both beginner training in Pearl 5 and Pearl 6 to anybody that wants it for a full day of course for $75, which is an amazing rate. And, and we really thank our sponsors for making that happen because we want to make it as easy as possible and as affordable as possible to learn Pearl. This year we'll feature a beginner track, just as we did last year. We're going to have an amazing set of talks for the next three days. Speakers like Gabor, Dave Rolski, uh, Patrick Michaud are all giving amazing talks on Pearl 5 and Pearl 6 content uh, to anybody that wants to learn Pearl. And it's very important that we have these kind of talks to attract people that aren't ready for the, the advanced talks. If we only have advanced talks at, at the Pearl Conference, then we're only going to get the same people coming back year after year. So the, the beginner track is, is really important to us. And I'm going to have Jeff in just a minute talk to us about the beginner lightning talks, which is another part of the beginner track. Before that, I also want to highlight the Pearl Newbie program. This is something that was inspired by the Enlightened Pearl organization's Send a Newbie Pearl program. And through this program, we had two lucky individuals this year that were uh, selected to attend YAPSI. They received a ticket to the conference. They received a ticket to attend the Zero to Pearl 5 training yesterday. And they received their entire hotel accommodations paid for, and their only cost was $50. So this was a program that we initiated to try to get new people to be interested in coming to the Pearl Conference. So for those two individuals, we welcome you and we hope you have a great time here this week. We also have this thing called the VIP reception. And you might be wondering, what does this have to do with beginners? And the answer is everything, because the people that are coming to, Pearl, coming to the Pearl Conference for the first time or are very new, you are our VIPs because you are very important to Pearl. You're our future and we want you to feel welcome. So today, after the talks are done around 550, right out here in the hallway, we're going to have a reception. It's a VIP reception and it's for you. So if you are new to the conference, please come out and join us. Enjoy some food. Enjoy some great drinks. And if you are not new to 
the Pearl Conference, then also please join us and help us in making, making the uh, new attendees feel welcome. Now I'm gonna ask Jeff to come up and speak briefly about the lightning talks. I just wanted to get your attention. So I'm Jeff Avery, I'm running the lightning talks. This year we have two sessions. We will end the conference here in the big room with a set of talks at 4.30 on Wednesday, and on Tuesday at 3 in one of the four rooms on the beginner track, we have the smaller, friendlier set. I have about half the talks filled already, so I need some more. I really need some more for the beginner side of things, so if this is your first time or you have never spoken before, I'd really like you to come up for five minutes. You only need two or three slides. Tell what you got to say, what you're working on, whatever. It's a lot less pressure in the small room, but we want you in. Remember, it's a gateway drug. First hit's free. <laughs> we expect you back for 20 minutes in a year or two. You get five minutes. I got a gong when you're done. And if you have any questions, come find me. If you have submitted a talk or had a talk accepted already, please find me. I need to work out the schedule, so I need to find you for that. Anything else, just ask. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. And if you have not ever given a talk at a conference and want to give it a try, the lightning talks are a great way to get that experience for the first time. I also want to mention the pull request challenge. This is an event that will be happening Wednesday evening. So for anybody that's hanging around after the conference is over on Wednesday, there will be a pull request challenge hackathon happening right here in this room and uh, there will be food provided. So we want to thank Craigslist for sponsoring the, the pull request challenge and they're going to be serving us dinner. So thanks to Craigslist for that. And if you're interested, go to the wiki and look for the pull request challenge and there's a section where you just add your name to the list so that we can get a count of how many will be here. Now I'd like to ask Ruth to speak for a couple minutes about the One Orlando Fund. Some of you people just rude. <laughs> this wonderful t-shirt that's been signed by Pearl Luminaries from all over the world. You want this, don't you? Yes. Okay, didn't want to hear any no's that time. We're having a silent auction to support the One Orlando Fund. One Orlando has been founded to support the families that have been affected by the shootings last week here. And dummy me, uh, in the organizer's channel I said, hey, we could have a silent auction. And of course the, the answer was well volunteered. So. Here we are. If you have items to contribute, cool swag, nifty things, whatever, get them to the registration desk. You can leave them there for me or you can find me. The auction will be set up lunchtime-ish where you got your badge. That's where we're going to be setting that up. Um, and, and we'll track you down kind of at the end of the conference to take your money and get that to uh, the appropriate places. If you have uh, an item, uh, I need to know its market value, and we'll take care of getting you a donation letter and all of that stuff after the conference. Um, it's a great idea, and it was kind of last minute, but we've got over 20 items already put together. Sawyer X is bringing some. Where's Sawyer? Way over there. Um, I have brought some, some nifty woodworking that I do. Uh, Opensource.com, which I write for on the side, has sent some nifty swag, including an Ogeo backpack like the one I towed around. Um, so look for that and, and please participate and thank you. Dan. Thank you, Ruth. Ruth is one of our volunteers that's helping out this week. We have a lot of volunteers that are helping out this week and we really appreciate it. I do want to just briefly highlight a few of, of our organizers right now and these are the individuals that literally started the day after YAPSI was done last year and began planning for this event. We've been meeting regularly throughout the year to make this event happen. And I'm going to be thanking all these people a lot more on Wednesday. So uh, I just wanted to point them out primarily because 
I want to point out that there's been a shift in the way that we're running Pearl events at the Pearl Foundation. In past years, the way that things would happen is we would find we would have different Perlmonger groups throughout the country submit bids and say we want to run Yapsi, and we would pick the best bid and award it to them and say go go run Yapsi. We'll see you in in 12 months. And what happened was you had some great years and some not so great years. In addition to that, we had a lot of relearning the same problems year after year. And so what we are doing now instead is we're building up a committee of individuals that are working on the Pearl Conference year after year so that rather than having the, the peaks and troughs, we're going to see more of a, a gradual, continuous improvement, we hope. So uh, I want to thank all these people for all their help, and, and we'll talk about them more on Wednesday. Now, sometimes people ask me, wh why is this event becoming so corporate? Why do we need so many sponsors? Why are we making such a big deal about this? And I don't know that, that we've done a, a good enough job of making this information available, but I wanted to share this for you today because it may, become, it may come as a bit of a sticker shock to see how much a YAPSI costs to run. And the, the numbers have been ever gradually increasing. We were almost at $130,000 to run last year's YAPSI. And the reason the numbers are growing is uh, more than I'm going to talk about right now, but if you're very interested, come see my talk tomorrow called So You Want to Run a Pearl Conference, and I'm going to talk about this a lot more. But what would happen if we didn't have sponsors? What would happen if we just said, okay, let's take the amount that it costs to run a YAPSI, divide it amongst the number of people that are coming, and just set that as our ticket price? So let's take a look at what happens if we take the total cost for each YAPSI and divide it by the number of attendees. It turns out that to run last year's YAPSI, if we charged every person that attended uh, an equal amount to attend, it would have cost about $350 per person to make YAPSI happen. But as most of you are aware, not everybody that comes to YAPSI uh, buys a ticket. There are a lot of people that put a lot of effort into making this thing happen. There are speakers that put hours into preparing their talks. There's organizers. We have keynote speakers. And all of these people put so much of their time and effort into making this thing happen that it's just not right to also say, and we want you to spend $250 to be here. So what happens if instead of looking at per participant, we look at what's the cost of running YAPSI per typically paying partic participant? And it turns out that the cost is right around $450 per person to make a YAPSI happen. Now, in 1999, it cost $99 to come to YAPSI. And in 17 years, we've only gone up to 250. So over a course of 17 years, that's a 150% increase, which is very good, I, I believe. But even still, there are a lot of people that feel that maybe $250 is too high for attending the Pearl Conference. So what might happen if instead of saying it costs $250 for you to be here today, we had said it costs $450 to be here today on top of the, your travel costs, on top of your hotel reservation? There might be many fewer people at this event today, and that would be a loss for us all. So sponsors play a very important role in making this event happen. It, it, it truly could not happen like this without them. Speaking of sponsors, I want to thank Booking.com briefly for making the video streaming possible. Booking.com is underwriting all of the, the, uh, the streaming and the AV equipment rentals and just making the funds available to make that happen. So thank you very much to Booking for making that happen. We'll be, thanking, we'll be thanking all the sponsors uh, in more detail throughout the conference. But very briefly, I want to thank, I do want to thank all our sponsors in whole, our platinum sponsors, cPanel and Craigslist, our silver sponsor, Bluehost, bronze sponsors, 
Grant Street Group, Signature Information Solutions, and Assurance, and our event sponsors, Pearl Careers and Pearl6.org. So thank you to all of you. We'll be thanking you more throughout the event. Thank you. So we understand that not everybody is crazy excited about the changes that are happening to this event, and we, we appreciate that and re we respect that. And we want to let you know that the best way to let us know how you feel this event hap is going is to take the survey. You should have all received an email by now from Barbie with the, your own personal link to the YAPSI survey. And I can't emphasize this enough. Please take the survey. The survey is so important to the organizers. I, I promise you, we read every single comment, we take it all to heart, and it influences our decisions on how the next year is going to be run for certain. The people that take the survey definitely have a big say in how this event is going to run in the future. So please take the survey. And if you don't feel comfortable leaving all your comments in the survey for whatever reason, come talk to me or go talk to Karen or Jean Hack. Let us know how you feel about this event or email admin at yapcna.org. Whatever it takes, let us know. We want to hear what you have to say. Now, with that being said, I truly hope you all have a great time this week. A lot of work has gone into this event by a lot of people, and we want to see this event wonderful for all of you. If there's anything that we can do for any of you, please stop by the registration desk, and we will be happy to assist any way we can. Now, I'd like to introduce the president of the Pearl Foundation, Karen Pauley, to come up and say a few words. last year and you couldn't see me over the podium apparently. <laughs> so. Okay, so good morning. My name is Karen. I'm the president of the Pearl Foundation. This morning I plan to give you a very brief overview of some of the things that we do. I'm going to be here all week, so if you want to find out more, you can come and find me and talk to me. And you can also have a look at our website and our blog. The Pearl Foundation is a US nonprofit that was set up to support the Pearl community. Dan has already said that in the beginning we were set up to support YAPSI, but as time has progressed, there are many other things that we've started to do. The main visible thing that we do are our grants <coughs> programs. We have a grants program called the Pearl Five Core Maintenance Fund that was set up in 2011 so that we could support and fund the work of David Mitchell and Nicholas Clark. David Mitchell had been working on Pearl with a grant that was provided in 2008 from Booking.com, but by 2011 that money had run out. So we really wanted to continue what we thought was incredibly important work, and to date we have raised nearly $450,000 for Pearl Five Court Maintenance. At the minute, we are funding the work of Dave Mitchell. This is how much he has received to date from that particular fund. And we are also continuing to fund the work of Tony Cook. Now, we have a new pumpkin, Sawyer, who I will meet with this week, and we will discuss what we want to do with this fund going forward and to see if we want to maybe fund some other people. This morning, I am incredibly pleased to announce that Booking.com, who are a major sponsor of this Pearl Five Fund, have donated another 100,000 US dollars to the Pearl Five Core Fund. <laughs> Which brings the total that we've raised to more than half a million. 
So this is our most successful fund. I would like to thank every single sponsor who has donated. Let me pass. So, as well as funding Pulse 5, we fund Pulse 6. Yes. <laughs> so back in 2008 again, there was a grant received by the Pearl Foundation from Ian Hague for 100,000 US dollars to support the work of Pearl 6. Now that fund is finished. Yay, it only took us six years. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are three grants that are still currently running, but they will be completed this year. And that fund is finished. Now last year at Boston when Larry announced the stable release of Pearl 6, the question was how do we continue to fund that work? So we created the Pearl 6 Core Development Fund, which was started to fund the work of Jonathan Worthington. So to date we have raised 44,000 for that work. Jonathan is working on Pearl 6 at the minute. And this is a much newer fund. So I'm very hopeful in the coming years that we will see the same sort of result as we have seen from the Pearl 5 fund. We also have a general grants program. What if your work is not core Pearl 5 or core Pearl 6? I mean, that is a very small set of people in the community who are doing that type of work. So we also have a grants program that looks at smaller grants, grants that are maybe under $3,000 that could have benefit to the wider community. And we have a committee that evaluates grants like that every two months, which is actually quite a bit of work. At the minute, we have grants running, I believe, in things like R Pearl, and also the revitalization of blogs.pearl.org. But there are a number of grants running. And I don't actually want to give you a big list of running grants, and I believe they do exist on the website. So the Pearl Foundation is solely run by volunteers. So this morning, I would like to thank all of our volunteers. I would like to thank Nazaki-san and his team who run the general grants program. I would like to thank all the Pearl 5 and Pearl 6 people who have to respond to me and vote on all the grants on those two particular funds. I would like to thank all our mentors who help with our internships. In the past, we've taken part in things like GSOC, an outreach program for women. Now, we haven't done that yet this year, but I'm hoping in the winter season that we can take part in those programs again. I think they're incredibly important, but they do require mentors in the community who have the time to deal with interns who want to work 40 hours a week. Everyone really is a volunteer, all our mentors are, and it's a lot of work for them. If you have a Pearl project and you would like an intern to work on it, if you want to speak to me, because before we had internships with projects like Dancer and uh, Medicipan, Dancer run by Sawyer, who's the Pearl 5 pump king, apparently. He may not have a lot of time to be a mentor for me <laughs> in the coming season, but if you have a Pearl project that would benefit from having someone work on it for some extra time, do come and speak to me. I would love to thank the conferences team who organized this YAPSI and the teams behind the Pittsburgh Pearl Workshop and the DC Baltimore Workshop. We have a fantastic team. It's one of the biggest sets of volunteers I've ever seen at IAPSI. It's kind of amazing. I turned up yesterday and I didn't really have that much to do. So thank you very much for all your help. I'd like to thank the TPF board who deal with really exciting things like trademarks and IP. <laughs> well, those are the things we rarely talk about. Who cares that we're renewing our US trademark this year? Me. So <laughs> I'd like to thank everyone who helps with the legal thing. And again, to thank the sponsors because Sometimes our sponsors give the very specific things, which is great. No one really wants to fund the boring legal and admin stuff. So I want to thank everyone who donates to the general fund and allows us to do that. Our community advocacy team, who try to help us better understand the Pearl community. And also to thank our marketing team, and Mark Keating leads that team. He, um, this year he did some work in Falstam. I would also like to thank Wendy and Liz, they're not actually TPF volunteers. I'm gonna call them honorary TPF members <laughs> who do so much work. They go out and they help our marketing team. They help fund our marketing. They produce lovely stickers and stuff for us and they turn up at the events with such enthusiasm to run the booths. Thank you very much. <laughs> We have a couple of volunteers who are stepping down this year, so I'd like to thank Casey West, who has looked after our website for quite a number of years. He is going to step down at the end of the year to give us time to transition to a new website, so thank you very much, Casey.
I know you're not here, but thank you. And Yaakov Sloman, who was our community advocate, is also stepping down. Yaakov was the person who came up with the very important deferral event that we're having tonight. He has been a great help to me and the rest of the foundation in working with beginners and new people in the community, and also helping me to navigate sometimes the difficult things I have to mediate amongst community members. So I will miss his wisdom, but I would like to thank him very much for all the work that he's done. And one final thank you to the sponsors. I would like to thank, I'm not going to thank them all, and Dan has listed quite a few, but I would like to thank the sponsors who've donated more than 50,000 this year. So I would like to hear a big thank you for CPanel. <laughs> For Craigslist, <laughs> and Booking.com. <laughs> awesome. And thank you very much for coming. Karen. I also want to point out real quickly that if you would like to help support any of these funds, we have some nice items available over at the registration desk. We have patches. We have a, a patch, a literally a patch, that says, I patched Pearl. <laughs> and the reason it says that, this patch costs $50. And the reason it costs $50 is that's what it costs for one hour of development time on the fund. So. For each patch you buy, you are funding one hour work, in this case, for Pearl 5 core maintenance. We also have a Pearl 6 supporter patch that is $50 as well that directly benefits the Pearl 6 development fund. So uh, please support those funds. That's how we can keep them going. We, we greatly appreciate the support of sponsors like Booking.com, but it's not just on their shoulders to make this happen. Please, everybody, help contribute to keep keep these funds going. And now I'd like to introduce Sawyer, who's going to come up and run the State of the Velociraptors. Let's see. Okay. I think this fits. Can everyone hear me? All right, good. Well, good for me. Um, <clears> Hi, <throat> everyone. Uh, before I begin, I would like to ask anyone who is giving a State of the Velociraptor, uh, please come on forward and sit in the front row if you can, just so we could make the transition smoother. Um, and I can name you if you are not coming. Um, Doug is already here. Rick, Chad, John, Andrew. I see you already. Four, right? And Steven, who is consistently hiding. Okay, you better be. <laughs> All right. So, um, my name is Sawyer, Sawyer X. I will be emceeing this session. Now, the state of the Velociraptor had always been a community status update. We have a big Pearl community. Um, but our community is also composed of several sub-communities dedicated to specific projects and efforts. As there is more than one way to do practically anything, there is more than one way to do a state of the Velociraptor. And as there are many smaller communities within our Pearl community, we can probably have several smaller smaller state of the Velociraptors. So it is with great pleasure that I present to you several community members who will provide short talks about what is going on in their neck of the woods with the attempt of creating a more complete picture of our community and its status. Now I have uh, recently taken over the Pearl Pumpkin role and thank you. It is, 
hard to explain what this role entails. Um, it is also by far the uh, greatest uh, honor and trust I've ever received. Um, the Pro 5 porters are the group in charge of maintaining and developing Pro 5. It is a quiet group that does not stand out. And that tends to happen with developers. At the same time, this group makes a serious effort to improve the language we all use. Thinking of speaking for several minutes about this group, I realized I could talk about two things. I could either talk about the language, what kind of things we've done, what things we hope to achieve, but Ricardo Cygnus is actually going to give a talk about this, which if you are interested, I recommend going to. So the second thing I could do is spend several minutes just talking about the people in the group and thanking them for all of the work that they do. Um, unfortunately, that list is far too large for only a few minutes. So instead, I would like to take one minute to thank the group as a whole for working hard, for taking care of our language. I want to thank the Pro Foundation for the Pro 5 Core Maintenance Fund and the work that they do to make this happen as well. I want to thank all of the people in the group, people who open tickets, people who research them, people who work on fixes, people who discuss ideas and solutions and features. I think this is what makes Pro 5 a great language and an even better one in the future. Thank you. Now, let's begin. The following person will especially hate me talking about him, so I will take this opportunity to embarrass him a bit. He is an incredibly humble person, a supporting friend, an inspiration on how to be a human, on how to care, on how to love, and how to appreciate. He's also the person on this shirt that I'm wearing. And I am deeply honored and delighted to present John Gene Hack Anderson. Get up here. Good morning. It's good to see you all again. I missed you last year. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the beginner subcommunity of Perl, which we were all once a part of, right? Everybody in the room was at one point a beginning Perl programmer. Some of us still are. Um, so as Dan said earlier, incredibly important community. Um, when I was first learning Perl, I read Learning Perl, the llama book. And there's a bit in the preface, I think I'm remembering this correctly, where Larry talks about baby Perl and how when we're learning spoken language, we go through a period where we don't know it that well at first, and it's okay to speak sort of a pidgin dialect of baby, baby talk. And that for Perl, it's okay to do this too when you're learning Perl, that it's okay to talk baby Perl. This was, for someone coming from a non-programming background, trying to figure stuff out, this was incredibly empowering because somebody was giving me permission to not be perfect and explicitly saying that, you know, as long as it works, yeah, whatever, it's probably fine. You'll do better in the future. This was awesome. I think we've lost this a little bit. I want to encourage everybody, when you're giving feedback to beginners, to keep this in mind, right? That they're not going to do everything perfect, and they don't need to. If they're achieving the goal that they have with the script or the program they're writing, that's good enough. Encourage that. So as Dan mentioned, we have a beginner track. I want to highlight some talks on that that I think would be especially good for people who are new to Perl. So if you're a beginner at Perl 5, David Adler, uh, later today actually in the Summerlin room, all the beginner tracks will be in the Summerlin room, which is that corner of the, the ballroom. Uh, David's going to talk about a brief overview of resources for the Perl programmer. I think this will be great. Uh, Jeremy Holland on Wednesday is going to talk about all the regex he can stuff into 50 minutes. So if you're a new Perl programmer, you need to figure out how regexes work because they're kind of important. So this would be a great talk to attend um, Wednesday at 9 a.m. And then David Oswald, Wednesday at 1.30, is going to talk about an intro to Perl testing. One of the most frequent uh, comments I get when teaching the Zero to Perl course, so we use 
incomplete Perl tests as exercises, and people have to fix the tests and make them pass. Um, and I get more questions about, well, I don't really understand how testing works, or I don't understand TDD. Can we talk more about that? So if, if you're one of those people who've never quite gotten how you do testing, go to David's talk, and I think you'll have a better idea afterwards. So I'm going to break the SOTV convention a little bit because Matt's not here to smack me um, and talk a little bit about Perl 6, even though SOTV is pretty Perl 5 specific. Um, Patrick Michaud is going to be doing a two-part intro to Perl 6 for beginners on Tuesday and Wednesday. Dave Rolski is going to be talking about basic OO in Perl 6 on Tuesday at 11 a.m. I'm sure that will be fantastic because Dave's super smart. And then finally, if you're a beginner at Yapsi, right? Yapsi is just as much a learned skill as Perl. And I don't think we do a great job of teaching people how to Yapsi. Um, so if, if you're new to Yapsi, here's some stuff you should know about. Dan already talked about the survey, and he emphasized the importance of the survey for organizers. I'm going to emphasize the importance of the survey for a different group and hopefully maybe motivate you more. Speakers. As a speaker, nobody will tell you to your face how well you did a talk. Nobody will tell you to your face if your talk sucked. So you always have the secret fear that your talk is actually horrible. The survey, being anonymous, provides you an opportunity to tell somebody if their talk is horrible so that they can actually maybe fix it. Um, so please, if you go to talks, fill out the survey for the talks that you go to. Tell people whether or not they sucked so that they can get better. Or if they were actually were great, tell them that they were great. Tell them why. Give them specifics. Um, we do a thing at Yapsi called lightning talks. I think it's a really important part of the Yapsi culture. Um, Jeff talked about this a little bit, but particularly if you're here as a first timer, I really encourage you to go to lightning talks. Um, if you're at all interested in speaking, I encourage you to submit a lightning talk. Um, I got started speaking through light. Who, so of, of the speakers, who got started through giving a lightning talk? Yeah, it's a great way to get your feet wet. It's only five minutes, even if it's really horrible, it's over pretty quickly. Um, so <laughs> it, it's a good experience. Um, so we have the beginner track lightning talks. Jeff mentioned Tuesday at 3 p.m. Those will be in the Summerlin room, all the beginner track stuff in the Summerlin room. And then the main lightning talks Wednesday in the big room. We also have a number of social events. Um, despite being, you know, a, a, uh, typically a social programmer nerds, we actually do like to get together and talk to each other face to face occasionally. Um, there is a PRC hackathon, as Dan mentioned. It's actually starting now. If you go to the wiki, you can sign up, pick a module, and start working on it in between talks, at night, whatever, and then it's gonna wrap up Wednesday, uh, the last sort of event of the conference with the, the two hour hackathon with the food and yada, yada, yada. We have a VIP mixer tonight. I encourage everybody to attend that. Um, it's a lot of fun. And then every year, David Adler, does this thing where he brings in the most incredibly horrible movies that have ever been made. Um, and there's sort of a community live Mystery Science Theater 3000 type event. That's happening tonight, also in the Summerlin Room, 7.30 p.m. Um, and, and this is sort of the most yapsy thing ever. So I encourage you to attend if you never have. And of course, the most valuable thing about yapsy is the people. Right? All of the interactions that you can potentially have. So if you're new to Yapsi, you may be somewhat reluctant to talk to these people um, because they seem like big, important people doing big, important things, and you don't want to bother them. But they want to be bothered. That's kind of why they're here. So I want to point out some people that if you are new here, you should seek out and try to talk to because I promise you they're all very friendly and very nice. So Larry and Gloria in the front row, right? Just say hi to them. Say thanks. MC Sawyer X, give him a hug. He loves hugs. There you go. Our former Pump King, Ricardo Cygnus, who is hiding down here on the floor. Also a nice guy. Uh, Stephen Little. <laughs> Father of Moose. Um, and Karen Pauly, the president of the TPF Foundation. Super nice lady. Um, say hi to her, say thanks, because she does a tremendous amount of stuff that nobody else would be willing to do. Go up to the people, say hi, tell them who you are, tell them why you're here, chat to them for a few minutes. Thanks, enjoy Yapsi.
All right. So, I'm actually very, very excited to have the next person. One of his roles is maintaining the OpenDSD packages for Perl. And while some might imagine the BSD, especially OpenBSD, um, is still releasing 5.6, uh, it is actually far more up to date than most GNU Linux distributions nowadays. And I'm personally very interested in hearing what he has to share with us on the topic. Please welcome Andrew Fresh. kind of an overview of all of the different BSDs. There are kind of uh, four main BSDs, and I'm mostly involved with OpenBSD, so the rest are really overviews. Uh, uh, the first one is the main that probably has the largest community, uh, which is FreeBSD. They have several versions uh, of Perl in their ports tree. They have removed Pearl, Pearl from the base system, uh, although it was never really a super big part of it, but they, it does come with it, and they have, uh, or they, it's in their ports tree, and it has several versions available, lots of uh, active use of it, I guess. And uh, they do have a development version that you can just package install, and their packaging system is really nice. Um, from what I've heard, I haven't actually done too much using it. Dragonfly similarly uses their same D ports, but it inherits all of the things from Perl or from FreeBSD's port, port packaging system. And uh, so it has those same versions. As everything else, I still haven't had a chance to actually install Dragonfly on anything, even though I keep meaning to. Um, so next, NetBSD is actually the upstream source for Package Source. Uh, package Source is a packaging system that actually installs on lots of different systems. Uh, it's available on all sorts of different Linux distributions, OS X, uh, all of the different BSDs it'll install on. Uh, they do only track a single version of Perl 5. Uh, I did ask my friend uh, Savan about how all it works, and he says that it's really a core part of the package source ecosystem, and it, a lot of the things in the ecosystem wouldn't work without Perl. So they, they do rely heavily on it and keep it nicely up to date. Uh, what I'm currently a uh, part of is the OpenBSD project where uh, Perl is actually part of the core or the base system. Uh, this lets us use Perl in lots of different uh, local application or local utilities and things like that. Uh, there's a Perl version of the add user command and things like this that ship with the system. Uh, the biggest is, of course, the packaging system for Perl or for OpenBSD is all written in Perl uh, and very, and very nice. It works extremely well. Does all sorts of crazy distributed package building on multiple systems and multiple architectures, all from yeah, crazy good stuff. So, currently, we're still on Perl 5.20.2 in the base system. I'll probably update to a later 5.20 release before the 6.0 release gets cut short, uh, OpenV 6.0 comes out shortly, or gets cut shortly. Um, I have 5.22 ready to go in, but due to things and changes, uh, Mod Perl doesn't work, so I couldn't actually update that because System Perl is what all of the port tree uses, and apparently CPAN is broken, so hopefully, you can get that fixed, and as soon as 
ports unlocks and things come back up, I can get 5.24 fixed up and get it into the base system and get back on track with keeping uh, Perl up to date and everything in the base system. So uh, I'll be talking Wednesday morning or not completely unrelated to, to the BSDs, uh, but come see my talk and ask me any questions uh, about any of the BSDs that I can hopefully answer because I did do know people in all the community. So thanks. This time I have slides. If there's someone else's slides, it's fine. Seems to be okay. All right. I know they're not up. It's fine. So, um, much of what makes uh, Perl a very successful language is our uh, attention to testing. And with our testing infrastructure, the CPAN testers, it provides you with a complete platform to run automated tests and reports for a multitude of operating systems and configurations. The following person has taken on the role of maintaining CPAN testers with the blessing of Barbie. Quick tip of the hat and thank you to Barbie. And I'm happy to present Doug Bell, AKA Preaction. Let's see if we can get the slides going. There we go. So, hi, I'm Doug. Uh, this is the best picture anybody could find of me. Um, I come from Chicago. I'm the organizer of the Chicago Pearl Mongers, and uh, recently I've taken uh, the leadership role of the CPAN Testers Project. Um, the CPAN Testers Project, as you might admit, tests CPAN, um, but it also tests Pearl against CPAN. Yes. Um, it runs a variety of tests on a variety of operating systems, Perl versions, uh, dependency versions, uh, and a lot of edge cases. There are testers who uh, specifically test certain minor things that otherwise people might not test themselves. Um, this uh, CPAN testers is a large part of our testing culture. Um, Perl users write tests, they upload the CPAN, and those tests get run. Uh, a testing culture leads to compatibility culture. Um, if a test fails because of a new Perl version or a new operating system version, you get notified. And a compatibility culture results in a stability culture. The biggest thing that any other person has ever said to me about Perl is that Perl just works. And a large part of that is CPAN testers. CPAN testers is uniquely Perl. No other language has anything like this. Um, and this is why I'm honored to uh, take the lead in this uh, new role. Um, so the state of the CPAN testers project, um, CPAN testers is now up. Uh, we had a bit of a kerfuffle, um, a little bit of a downtime uh, last year uh, due to a database and a broken hard drive. Um, turns out that a 750 gig database uh, takes a little while to bring back up. Um, so we've got a new server, and it's mostly working. I am still working out uh, a bunch of the remaining issues, anybody who's talked to me about them. Um, I am working on it. I am just extremely slow about it. Um, so we've got some future plans. 
we want to build a new web app with some uh, modern web development practices. Uh, we want to improve stability um, to make sure there's no single point of failure, so hopefully the great crash uh, won't happen again. Uh, and we want to get more testers. Um, it's, uh, we want to make it easier to set up a tester machine, easier for you to grab a virtual machine, uh, run a program, and start testing CPAN yourself. Um, we need help. Um, if you are interested in helping, we've got project tracking up on GitHub. We've got an IRC channel on irc.pearl.org. And you can talk to me. Hi. Uh, some special thanks go out to Barbie for uh, uh, keeping this going and for helping me in the transition. Uh, to the Enlightened Pearl organization, one of the major sponsors of the CPAN Testers Project, and the Birmingham Pearlmongers, the other major sponsor of the CPAN Testers Project. Um, there are a lot of other sponsors. Um, unfortunately, I, I hate this too numerous to list, but um, I only have five minutes. And of course, all the users who use CPAN and send in reports. So in addition, did you wanna come up here and transition? Um, so in addition to the CPAN Testers Project, uh, Gene Hack convinced me uh, to talk about the Perl QA Hackathon. Um, this is an event um, in the classic hackathon sense where a bunch of people get together and work together on a bunch of, uh, on a specific project. Um, being the Perl QA Hackathon, this project is the Perl and its tool chain. Um, so infrastructure, uh, network services, CPAN testers, uh, Perl itself. Um, this was my first year going, um, so I'm not that qualified to talk about it, but I'll do it anyway, because I'm up here. Um, this year was held in Rugby, UK, an absolutely wonderful city. Um, and some of the things that got done, the, this here is the whole list. I will go through uh, some highlights with some photos that I can find. Um, pause. Uh, pause is the main thing, uh, kind of the lead-in to CPAN. Uh, when you're uploading a CPAN module, you upload first to Pause. Um, pause has been uh, migrated to Plaque recently and has been made easier to test. Uh, Meta CPAN. Um, the people for the Meta CPAN project have uh, updated their use of Elasticsearch to the latest version and done a lot of uh, performance and stability improvements because of that. Uh, Perl 6, uh, there were some people working on Perl 6. Um, they were working on uh, stability improvements and performance improvements. Uh, Metaconfig, which is the, um, the system that builds Perl, um, much like AutoTools, uh, Perl has Metaconfig, and so a lot of maintenance uh, uh, was done in the Metaconfig. Uh, CPAN testers as I previously went over, uh, Barbie and I, and uh, we had an intern um, for a little while. Um, so we got the transition handled, and I was able to uh, put together some server automation for uh, deploying and fix some more bugs, of course. Uh, Perl itself, um, Ricardo released a release candidate of Perl 524, um, and a lot of the uh, nuts and bolts of the Perl ecosystem, Xutils MakeMaker, um, Pause, CPAN, let's see. Can't think of anything right now, but I'm sure it's in there. Uh, uh, PPI, um, other kind of modules. Uh, Chad Granham um, had a lot of discussion around test two, and uh, um, that was kind of put to a discussion about how, how to go forward with that project. Um, and there was discussion about the CPAN River, which is uh, basically as you as your project, as your CPAN module is dependent on more, it goes higher in the river and uh, it affects more of the downstream uh, CPAN systems. Um, so Neil um, had a discussion about how to detect that and how to ensure that the upriver modules, the very, very important modules, are uh, tested and maintained. Uh, there was lots more. This uh, um, wiki page will be able to show you. Um, 
And the important thing, though, is that we're all together. Um, there are 30 or 40 people that are invited to this event, and we're able to get together in a room, talk about Pearl, work on Pearl, and um, overall just improve Pearl itself for everyone that uses it. Um, so some thanks for the Prelay Hackathon. Thanks to Ricardo, who we embarrassed into uh, leaving his position. Um, thanks to all the sponsors of the QA Hackathon. Without them, we can't have this uh, wonderful event. Uh, thanks to the organizer, Neil, Bar, um, Neil Bowers, Barbie, and JJ Allen. And that's it. Thank you. All right. Small tidbit. I don't like football, but this is a sticker that we had of a uh, rugby. And people think I like football and now I can't peel it off. Okay. <laughs> that was for the uh, rugby QA hackathon. All right. Now, um, I have a very quick story about the next person. Uh, I actually met the next speaker uh, back in Israel a long, long time ago when I went to uh, Haifa PM and gave a talk about Moose. We had about five to six Pearlmonger uh, groups uh, within the vicinity of like 30 minutes. And uh, <clears throat> years later, I actually helped organize an Israeli Pearl workshop with uh, Gabo Sabo, and I met this person again. A year and a half later, we started working together. And when he wanted to play with some open source and free software and stuff like that, I suggested a half-baked project that I wrote. And he ended up rewriting about 90% of it um, he is now a major contributor and a core developer in MetaCPAN, which he will be talking to us about. It is my good friend, Miki Nasriachi. Please welcome him. I do see that I'm connected to something, but it's the wrong display. Are we sure this is the, the correct display? Well, I am connected to some display. we sort this out <laughs> offline. Um, we're going to bring someone else. Um, so we'll sort that out. Um, it's hard. I, I had to find some words to describe the next person. Um, I failed, but I will say something instead. Um, I owe many things to this person, uh, a few complaints, 
and uh, he was our Pearl Pumpkin for uh, a long time. Uh, he was in charge of the recent 524 release, as others, and he had written many of the modules that we use, and does the best superhero impressions I have ever heard. Get him drunk, it works. Um, I'd like to welcome Ricardo Signus, who agreed to say a few words about whatever he would like, um, probably about a, a, an actual topic. Please. This is a Mac, so this should just work. Wait, now it's hung. <laughs> oh, it's mirroring. Where's my cursor? OK, hold on. This is going to be great. OK. Hi. Uh, I'm going to talk about something six. Um, that's me. Uh, I am at Pobox, and usually when I'm here, it was in my role as Pumpkin, so I was talking about stuff that would be new in Pearl 5, and I was super stoked, because this year I was like, I'm never, ever doing that again. Um, <laughs> I've done that talk since 510, and I'm just like, it was the best thing I could think of to not have to do that talk. And then the organizers were like, um, hey, we need someone to do the talk for 524. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, I can do that. Um, but I'm not going to talk about what's new in Pearl 5. I'm just, I'm just not. I was like, you know what, I don't have to do this kind of stuff anymore. I'm not going to talk about it today. Um, I'll talk about it tomorrow. You can come by today. I'm going to talk about Dezilla. Um, so uh, Dezilla had a major release of version 5, the squiggly character release. Um, it works with both kinds of text. Um, and it works with everything else, too. So we added all kinds of encoding, the ability to mark your files as binary, don't munge them. That was in 2013. So I'm not going to talk about encoding or Unicode uh, today. Um, I'll talk about those on Wednesday, and you should come. It's going to be great. Um, it's also going to run long, uh, and it's before lunch. So, and I'm going to bar the doors. Um, <laughs> today I'm going to talk about Dezilla version 6. Um, Dezilla version 6 came out this, mo this month, earlier this month, um, mostly after being done at the QA hackathon. Um, and so they asked me to talk about Dezilla 6, and I said, like, not a lot happened, so I'm going to need a lot of filler slides, and I'm going to like meander. And they're like, yeah, just do it. Um, so Dezilla 4, that was pretty good, right? You guys <laughs> used that one? Had some good changes. Stashes got put in there. Um, so Dezilla 6, um, what did it do, right? It replaced path class with path tiny, um, because as everyone is aware, Dezilla prioritizes a small memory footprint and minimal <laughs> dependencies. Um, we, we deleted some plugins, um, mostly that were like, you could spell different things two ways, and I said, that's enough of that. Um, you can start doing non-ASCII variables in your code, and if we munge your code, it still works, so you can be compliant with certain states' regulations. Um, <laughs> and we, um, we now support UTF-8 source that includes a byte order mark. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll just talk about this one on Wednesday, too. Um, <laughs> Also added this, okay, so um, if you've got a package and we add a version to it, you tell Dezilla, I want you to add the version as late as possible, we've done this. Uh, now, in Dezilla version 6, you can do that, uh, which is a feature that's been in Perl for a while. And in fact, Dezilla itself uses this feature, and that gets to the last change in Dezilla, which is it requires Perl 514. And someone said, why would you do that? And I said, well, you know, I spent a lot of time trying to make Perl better. I kind of want to use it. Um, and why doesn't everybody, right? Do you guys need to hear a different talk? Do I need to tell you people about something? I'm going to tell you people about all the stuff that's new in Pearl 5. <laughs> so first of all, you can do this. This is great. And by the way, it doesn't let you put garbage in your version numbers. It has to be a real version number. You can do this thing and not have to remember where the parens go, right? You can get the length of undefined stuff and not get a stupid warning. That thing is awesome, and there's, I don't know, a million bug fixes. 
So why is everybody still running 5.8? I get it, right? I get it. You're running 5.8, you don't want to upgrade everything. And you, you don't think it's worth a hassle. And you're like, well, everybody runs 5.8, it's okay. But, okay, imagine if you saw your friend using their computer and they're running iTunes, right? But they're not running this iTunes or that iTunes or even that one or that, right? This, chronologically, <laughs> this is 514. That's 514. They're running 58, which if you follow the calendar, is this iTunes. <laughs> okay, let me so let me summarize. Pro 524. Pro 514. Okay. Pro 58. Don't run Pro 58. So distill version six. I don't know, bug fixes or something and path. 514! Please. Um, it is still a seven. Uh, I don't really know what I'm going to add to it. Uh, we have some ideas for features on the roadmap. Um, but I will tell you, I really like subroutine signatures. So, saying, you know, ready. So, it's out. If you're using this little upgrade, really upgrade, just up upgrade, please. Thank you, that is all. Okay. Redux. Let's see here. Hey, it's still the same thing. Good. Hey, look, stuff works. Okay. Uh, this goes out. Now, look, because um, because this was a problem, you're going to have to give a, an extra round, be a bit even nicer this time around. Please. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, again, sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, so, I have some exciting news from the MetaCPN crew. Uh, we have, in the last few weeks, uh, starting, uh, started to run a new version of uh, MetaCPN on a new set of servers. Um, basically, this is the, um, the website, but we also have, which is the most important part, uh, a new version of the API that runs uh, uh, underneath. And the main issue, the main thing that we fixed was we upgraded the Elasticsearch that's, that was extremely old, very slow and buggy, and we are now on the latest stable version of Elasticsearch, which means a lot of bug fixes, uh, speed improvements, and some other features. We are running on a three-node cluster, which makes it a bit more um, up and running uh, compared to uh, some issues that we had with the old one. We also have new features coming from the Elasticsearch itself. It is faster. It will be much more faster when we are done uh, improving the code a bit further. We also have better uh, CDN service and we have uh, uh, worldwide uh, routing and uh, caching uh, provided by Fastly. There are some breaking changes. Because of the great jump in Elasticsearch versions, uh, there are some things that we couldn't <coughs> avoid and they are breaking. So if you maintain any uh, API client, uh, reach out to us and we'll work with you to fix those. B0 is now officially frozen until the end of the year. We hope to fully migrate to V1. Uh, we will only fix uh, critical bugs, but in general, we are working on V1, and this is the, the way to go for us. We need your help. We want you to up, update your bookmarks and try the new version, report any issues to us. Um, we. Reporting issues is great, but we also uh, like to get patches. If anyone wants to provide fixes, this would be even better. So if you, if you want to join, we need, uh, we need volunteers to, to come and uh, join this open source project. It's a great one, and we will definitely make good use of your skills. 
reach out to us on any of those channels or talk to me if you want as well. I'm here throughout the conference and we'll be glad to hear from you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, speaking of cornerstones in Perl, we talked about the CPAN, we talked about the Zilla, we talked about CPAN testers, it's a lot of stuff like that. There is uh, one more thing that I think is uh, also a major cornerstone. It is probably, it's pretty close to impossible to find a modern Perl 5 module that does not include tests. It is even harder to find one that does not use our most common testing module, test more, part of the test simple distribution. Our next speaker is taking on the maintenance role for that, pushing the new testing module architecture with numerous development releases, detailed blog posts, and something I was very happy to see happen, a grant from the Pro Foundation. I would like to welcome Chad Granham, aka Exodist, to talk about this module and distribution and all the work he's done on it. Please welcome him. I didn't prepare any slides for this one. Mine's gonna be a bit more informal, but I wanted to talk about Test Simple because it has changed, which might be a scary thing to a lot of you out there. Um, but basically, Test Builder has been the core of testing in Perl for over a decade and it has been contorted and butchered into doing many things it was never intended to do. Um, about two years ago, I took over the project, initially thinking I wasn't gonna change much. Um, unfortunately, it became clear very early on that a lot of changes were needed to support the kinds of things people need to do in their tests these days. So, as of a couple months ago, just after the Rugby QA Hackathon, Test 2 officially landed. If you download the latest Test Simple distribution, which is Test More, Test Simple, Test Builder, it will use Test 2 under the hood. This is important because it takes all the things that people were doing on CPAN to abuse Test Builder and creates a proper way to do it. Things uh, that you had to monkey patch for now have proper hooks or proper APIs. Um, and it just makes it a lot easier for people who write and maintain testing tools, which translates to benefit to anyone who writes tests because you now have a lot more tools and a lot better tools, less fragile tools too. Um, if you really wanna find out a whole lot more about this, I'm giving a talk at 1.30 today uh, about test two, and it's gonna start with a very basic introduction that any beginner can follow and go all the way through to some very technical inner details depending on the audience. Um, at this point, there are already some people who are using this in the wild, uh, using the new features. Uh, I know that uh, Dave Rolski is uh, planning to change uh, test moose more. Uh, test class moose, sorry. Test class moose to use uh, test two under the hood, um, which uh, will really make that module a bit easier to maintain. Um, and there have been a few other people who have switched too. Um, test two took two years to land because I had to make very sure that I did not break things as much as possible. And at the moment, there are roughly five or six modules on CPAN that are known to be broken, but all the important ones have been fixed. So upgrading should not cause any problems for you unless you use one of those very rarely used modules. Um, so at the, to do this, I had to talk to a lot of people in the tool chain, a lot of people in Perl, uh, in the P5P group as well. And that mainly happened at the last two QA hackathons, the one in Berlin and the one in rugby. Uh, in these, uh, I presented what I was doing with test two and got lots of feedback from some really smart people. And as of the last one, the majority agreed that test two was ready. So it is now out. The last thing I wanna say about that before I step down is the performance. Uh, another scary thing about changing something like this is what are the performance penalties gonna be? Uh, at this point, anything that you do running on test two will generally be twice as fast as it was going through test builder. Now, if you use test builder as well currently, that's on top of test two, 
it will be slightly slower, but it's barely noticeable. Like the Moose test suite, if it takes five minutes to run on your system, it'll take five minutes and 10 seconds now. It really is a very tiny margin. Uh, the one place though, that I'd actually like help from anyone here who loves optimization um, is startup time, because test two takes twice as long to start up when compared to test builder. Um, but that, at that point on my computer, you're talking going from uh, 0.010 seconds to 0.030. So it's still not the biggest deal. Anyway, feel free to grab me around the conference. I'd love talking to anybody about this or spinning you up on test two. And please come to my talk at 1.30. I feel like I should have printed this out because I have to carry the laptop every time. <laughs> All right, so um, my first Tiapsi was um, Pisa in Italy. And the Pisa Tower is actually much smaller than it seems in every picture. And it has much many more tourists than you think uh, trying to take pictures tackling it. I don't understand that. Um, so I've been to quite a few Yapsies by now, um, but somehow it's only a fraction compared to the next person. And it is really nice to be able to present him here, um, Jeff Goff, Dr. Four, who you've probably been in one of his talks, talking to him on IRC. He'll be talking to us about Yapsi EU that will be taking place this year in Cluj Napoca. Please welcome him to the stage with applause. Thank you. Thank you. Are we live? Or? Oh, I. Aha. Aha, there we go. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, greetings from the deep, dark <laughs> depths of Transylvania. Um, you all know me as Jeff or Dr. Four on IRC. Um, I am a volunteer, speaker, and trainer, somehow, I'm actually my arm twist into that, uh, at uh, YAPC EU in Cluj Napoca, starting on. Let's see here, as it says here, 24th to 26th, August. Everyone is more than welcome to come down. Um, if you're interested in flights, the best way to get to here is through um, Munich. We'll start off. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is from my, uh, from my uh, boss over in uh, Transylvania. So first of all, hello from YAPC Europe. We're, um, Epizon is one of the main, is one of the uh, main sponsors, and we are a large, large pearl firm. Uh, probably, I think, one of the largest, certainly one, certainly lar certainly the largest in uh, Cluj Napoca, and probably, um, probably the second largest, maybe, in all of Romania. There may be one in Bucharesti. Uh, tra training is being done by uh, myself. Uh, Dave Frost came down, is coming down rather, uh, to do Pro 6, sorry, Pro 5. And we have a, another trainer for Red Talks. And we're closing, doing the same thing as we do here. Uh, Lightning Talks, et cetera, large program. Uh, we have a large, um, Cluj is very much a college town, so we have a large, a lot of uh, local people down there, so a lot of local, local color. 
um, a lot of things to do in the area. Um, this is the building that we're going, this is um, building which is roughly to mm, maybe a kilometer from Amazon home base. And of course we have, yeah, I, again, don't worry, no bite marks. And yes, uh, right, it should be about, uh, in terms of heat, it should be about, uh, in your degrees, uh, roughly 80s, in ours, roughly 30, we're expecting, so we're expecting a good, um, expecting a good heat. Uh, here's an overview of Cluj Napoca. Um, I don't have my pointer handy, but I think um, the venue is by the middle green building. If I can find, oh, I think the venue is over that way. In any case, um, one thing that uh, we should mention as well is that uh, Cluj Napoca was also uh, last year uh, the European youth capital. Uh, a lot, a lot of, um, we have a lot of startup businesses. Uh, IT is very much prevalent. Um, we have a lot of resources going in. Um, I don't know what you folks out here get, but I just want to briefly uh, brag about my uh, $5 a month fiber one gigabyte connection. So we, we have a, a lot of, um, I, obviously we have a lot of IT and a lot of people out there. Um, the, we have a large mixture of, um, I don't see that many women compared to how we are over in uh, Europe. Um, in Europe it's getting close to maybe 40% women, even in my, um, even in my office. So we have a lot, a better gender balance. Um, I'm sure we're working here in the U.S. as well towards that, but I'm glad to see that. And out of the 10,000 programmers, um, a good chunk of those are probably at Amazon, are at uh, Amazon and a few other IT firms in the area. So we have a large IT base and we are growing and everyone is encouraged to come on down, uh, get flights early. Uh, Cluj is a fairly small airport. Yeah. Um, so let's see here. Well, Bohemian cafes. Uh, she failed to mention the fact that we have uh, two steampunk cafes in the area. <laughs> um, we we started out with one last year, and the uh, from what I understand, the uh, designer that did the interior work for that um, didn't get what he felt was his. Um, and start up another steampunk cafe. Uh, one is about two blocks from my house, and the other one is about three blocks from my house. So I guess where I hang out most of my time when I'm out there. Uh, let's see here. The uh, central square here on the far side. In the middle, I'm not quite sure. Oh, not quite sure where that is. I think that's down by the city park. And obviously, there is the main city park. It's all roughly within um, 20 minutes walk or a uh, two or a two year old cab ride from the main venue. So uh, come on down. The main square is walking distance, and I'm also about uh, two minutes away from said main square on foot. Oh, I remember that. I, I wasn't there for that. I think I, st I think I saw them uh, the day before, but this is down on the main square. Um, a lot of art. Um, we have the Na we have the Cluj National Opera, which is also maybe five minutes from my place. Um, main um, we have opera, theater, all down the main square. Um, you've seen the churches briefly in the background. A lot of churches. But of course, the important thing is you. Uh, we need participants from everywhere. I know that um, 
at the very least, we're getting, I, you're going to be there. Uh, also, I know that uh, Jeff Avery is coming down and a few others. Uh, but we need more people. And by all means, come on down. Uh, the prices right now are on the way up. But um, if you fly in through Munich, yeah, uh, you should be able to get, you should be able to book rooms. So by all means, come on down. And of course, we have a few people that you may have may have seen around coming out joining us. Uh, Curtis is. I'm right now working with first one of his projects. Uh, Larry, you all know, uh, Sawyer Rex obviously is one of our keynotes. As this, Dave is training, doing his um, Pearl Web development with uh, Pearl and Dancer, and I'm doing a uh, Pearl Six version of Dancer, which. Uh, there's a talk coming up here at, I think I'm scheduled at four. Uh, Liana is a local and uh, one of our HR people is also giving me a talk, a uh, day talk on how to do presentation. Uh, she's been with uh, Evazon for several years, um, is uh, HR and has been immensely helpful in getting me in the door and doing a lot of the work that I needed to get my um, visa and corporation serum straightened out. And uh, there's this guy uh, who was doing an introduction to uh, Pearl 6, um, which I also did at um, OSCON last year, rather, sorry, this year, and uh, hope to be doing it at um, OSCON in London here in October. I have yet to hear, but it may happen. And of course, we have a lot of sponsors here. Um, Pearl Six people, uh, booking, Capside, uh, let's see here, uh, Mayon, and, and uh, I don't recognize Mayon, but I believe they're local. Um, Actors today is sponsoring us as well. And uh, let's see here, is uh, Pete here? Uh, Pete's outside. Uh, Pearl Career sponsoring as well. And of course, Easton name. And of course, all of you. Thank you. Okay. How incredibly photogenic over it is, right? That picture was amazing. It was just me. All right. So, um, by the way, rumor has it that the beer in Cluj is surprisingly cheap. That might be a consideration for some people here, I have heard. Uh, they do have an awesome, awesome Pearl community there. Okay. So um, our next, spe next speaker will be the final speaker for this state of the Velociraptor. The next uh, state of the Velociraptors will possibly have some of the same speakers and possibly new speakers talking about their parts. I could speak tirelessly about the next person. Um, someone who had been described this breakfast as a starter, not a finisher. Um, I learned and keep learning so much from this person on an almost daily basis. And he is a prolific CPAN author, a language explorer, a personal mentor, and a good friend. It is my deepest honor to be able to introduce him. You might just know him. Mr. Moose, uh, uh, Stephen Little. He really likes the hugs, the hugs. Long, long hugs. It makes him feel better. All right, let's see. I have a Mac, but hopefully it will just work. We'll see. I was told to be patient. Right? There we go. John, you said this would just work. Okay. Yay! See? Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Yellowish, but we'll see. Okay. Um, so, and actually, I don't have my speaker notes. Why is that not working? Sorry. 
No? All right, well, we'll wing it. We'll see. Um, <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, Orlando. I have a bit of a history with Orlando. We used to come to the Orlando Pearl Workshop every year, um, and I gave a talk one year called uh, Pearl is Not Dead, It's a Dead End. Um, and in that, I was maybe, you know, not being the kindest person. Um, so uh, I recently had, as, as John liked to call it, uh, haters reformed, or what, no, reformed haters. Uh, and so <coughs> uh, I wanted to sort of give this talk. I gave this in FOSDEM in Brussels. And, uh, and so this is basically my, my revisiting of this topic. Um, so again, sorry, that was the uh, talk before. So in that talk, I talked about a number of different subjects. I talked about the community, um, how uh, we were very isolated and, and how we, 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 had, we lived inside an echo chamber. Um, I talked about Pearl 5 porters and their love of bike shedding. Um, I talked about how we still had some really, really old crap in the core still. Um, I talked about how we didn't have subroutine signatures, um, which uh, you know COBOL and Fortran had from the 60s and 70s. Uh, I talked about our poor support for certain forms of concurrency and parallelism. Yes, we have forks, but we don't have anything else, really. Um, I talked about the sad state of object-oriented programming in the core. Um, I talked about CPAN and all the crap that you might find on it. Um, I talked about the internals and who in their right mind would want to deal with that crap. Um, I talked about Perl 6 and the hole that it had to sort of climb out of after 15 years. Again, I wasn't being very nice. I was in a bad mood, I guess. Um, so, 2016, I decided, all right, let's, let's, let's relook at this because things have changed. Uh, it had been a couple years. When I gave that talk, I was just turning 40, and so I, it, that had given me pause, and I started to think, you know, about uh, age and all those kinds of things. I'm over 40 now, so I just don't care. Um, <laughs> but I was realizing as I did this that Pearl is actually 30. It's just about 30 now, I think. We're, we're like close within like a, a couple months or so. Um, and, you know, that's getting old, too. <laughs> um, that's 1987. In 1987, things were a lot different, too. Okay, That's me in 1987. That's Matt Trout in 1987. <laughs> that's Sawyer X in 1987. <laughs> and Larry in 1987. Okay, Lots of things change. If you, if you see all of us, we're very different people now. <laughs> So, and I, I bring this up to make the point that Pearl is actually a mature community. And, and you know, as much as we talk about wanting beginners and things like that, uh, one of the things that I think is really nice about Pearl is that we, we, we bring in these beginners and we are, we are also a very mature community, which is very different from, you know, some of the other communities that are coming up <laughs> these days. Um, and, and, you know, if you, if you follow some of these communities, you see that they're actually running into problems that, you know, may, some of the old timers may be familiar with that happened and there were problems, well, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, and we solved them, but they're all running into them, so it's quite interesting. And one of the things that I noticed a lot is that, uh, you know, if you follow some of the JavaScript luminaries on Twitter, they're complaining because, you know what, people use open source software and they want to give you features and then they want to do this and they want to do that, and, and, and maybe somebody maybe takes a module down and causes a giant worldwide breakage or things like that. <laughs> you know, this is, th there's a maturity that we have in the Pro community um, and I think one of the hallmarks of that is uh, programs like Adopt a Camel and the, uh, what's the pause uh, ID for the adoption? Adopt Me pause ID. Okay, so we actually have a way of transitioning people. And you've seen some of the things uh, Karen was talking about, people moving on, uh, new people coming in, Chad jumping in and taking over a 10-year-old test, test module and really breathing new life into that. We have uh, sort of a foundation for that and we have a way of doing that. And I think that shows a certain amount of maturity. Um, we also, we, we weather storms really well. Uh, I used to be on IRC all the time. I've aged out of it, I think, at this point. Also, I don't work from home, so I actually have, like, work to do during the day, and I can't just sit around and be on IRC all day. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I like, I think the best illustration of a mature community, or the way we've matured, is to think about the different ways, uh, the different communication channels that evolved over time. Um, you know, we, we, we weathered the dot-com boom, and, and we, we went from the, the older Usenet and mailing lists and email and such, but then the first dot-com boom, you started to see a lot of other things like Pearl Monks and use.pearl. Now, we can all laugh at Pearl Monks' 90s design, but in the 90s, that shit was cutting edge, <laughs> okay? <laughs> use.pearl, how many of you remember use.pearl? Okay, it was a great place, lots of really good articles and stuff like that, or lots of good posts and things like that. P5P came around, IRC, 
Uh, eventually things went away, so we lost uh, use.perl, but that's okay, because we got Perl, blogs.perl.org. Um, things also change, Perl Monks is getting less, Stack Overflow is getting more, uh, we're incorporating with the, the larger world, uh, Slack, um, sorry, oops, wrong button, GitHub, so we, we begin to pull all these things in, basically any useful tool. Hmm, I wonder, I, do I know a, a programming language that's really useful, it's just always there and you can just use it to glue things together? Perl, we do the same with, with our community and with our people. And, and it's all Tim Toady. It doesn't matter to us where we're all communicating and how we're all doing stuff, we're all there. And I think that's a hallmark of a mature community, which I think is an important point. Um, I also talked about Perl 5 Porters. Now, uh, some of you may or may not know, I moved to the Netherlands with my family about two years ago to take a job at booking.com. Um, and bike sheds are a serious frickin' business over there, okay? <laughs> like, there's no joke. I understand now why the Perl 5 Porters love them so much. Um, this is actually me, uh, the picture's not coming out so good, but this is actually me on the way to work. I dropped my bike off in one of those big ass <laughs> bike sheds that's underneath a train station uh, and it's just huge. And that's the small one, by the way, that you're seeing right there. And you're only seeing half of it. Um, so another thing also that happened in P5P uh, that, that I think is important to point out uh, is that we got a code of conduct, okay? And you may or may not like this code of conduct thing, but ultimately I think it helps out. Um, we also had the, the renewed uh, P5P weekly summaries. Uh, so one of the things that I've always struggled with with P5P is just spending, finding the time to read all the stuff. So it's perfect. Sawyer does it for me now. <laughs> and he posts it. <laughs> so we also weathered a change from Ricardo Cygnus. Right here. What are you implying? Nothing. I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. Hey, man, it's, yeah. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, P5P used to have a bad reputation. Uh, and I think it's gotten a lot better. Uh, you know, this pig is smiling. He doesn't have, he, he still gets to roll around in the shit, so he's happy with that, but he's also very, <laughs> 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 So, we also saw a lot of new features. This is one of the things I complained the most about in that talk, uh, and, and one of the reasons why a lot of people, I think, thought Perl was dead. It seemed like it was full of a lot of old features, but we got some new ones, and I share Ricardo's absolute love for the signatures uh, as well. Um, which is cool, you know, in 520 we get these subroutine signatures, it's really, really interesting stuff. Um, and also too, a little known fact, in 518 we got computed go-tos, which this is really awesome because this actually brings us up to date with uh, <laughs> Fortran 66, so yeah. Um, but actually, no, seriously, this is the list that I was able to compile, I'm probably missing a few things in there, Rick can, Rick can tell me for sure. Um, and that first one at the top is not just me just doing an ellipse, that's the yada 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 operator, which is actually quite fun. Uh, but we actually got a lot of stuff uh, in, in the last couple of years, so as Rick says, upgrade, 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 please. Um, we did get rid of CGI, okay? Can we get a broad applause, even if you don't want it? In the talk, I talked about CPAN, and, and I had a concern uh, that, you know, Ruby Gems and NPM and all these ones, they were just catching up to us. They were biting at our heels, and we were, you know, we maybe needed to, to really up our game and stuff like that. And I, I thought that they would just steal all our good stuff. They really didn't. Um, <laughs> um, you know, there, there, there's some good packaging systems out there, but nothing, nothing compares and nothing is even getting anywhere close to what I thought it would be uh, uh, of the infrastructure that we have in CPAN. And also, as you can see by what Doug was talking about, we're making it better. And also what Mickey was talking about, we're making this better and we're continuing to improve it. So they are chasing our tails. Um, this, I like to point out uh, Meta CPAN, because if you just look at, just take a second and think of how much information is on that web page and available to you. <coughs> We have the, the dependencies. If you scroll down further, you get reverse dependencies. Uh, we have the source over there. We, you can browse through the raw files. You can see the changes. I mean, that's a huge amount of information in one place. Go to an NPM module, go to a Ruby gem page, go to uh, the Python, uh, whatever they are now, pip pip or whatever, vault of Paranoxious, I don't know, it's gone. Um, it's nothing compared to this, okay? And, and this is just getting better and better. Um, the core. Okay, uh, I, my biggest complaint in that was the core, and I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't know the core well enough. Um, and you know what, if you spend some time with it, you, you just kind of get used to it, you know? You, you begin to know where you left things and where you can find stuff. Um, the, the tokenizer is still a little bit crazy. I don't recommend going in there. Um, but if you do spend some time with it, you find that there's some really, really cool stuff in there. There's really, really interesting stuff. 
Um, which brings me to P5MOP, which is a project that I was doing to try and take the Moose stuff and bring it into the core. Um, and, and I s made like three or four different prototypes and finally not until I actually spent some time with the core did I find what I think will hopefully ultimately end up being the final version. Uh, but there's so many nice things that are just sitting there in the core that, that I never even thought of. Uh, I did complain about asynchronous programming um, and you know what, I'm going to still complain about that because I don't think we've really necessarily fixed that one but that's okay, we're going to wait for Perl 6 to figure it all out and then we'll just steal it from them. Um, <laughs> And hopefully we'll figure out where that bolt fits in. I'm not entirely sure. Um, so, Perl 6 also. I, I, I made this, you know, the, the got to climb out of the hole, all this kind of stuff like that. Um, but Perl 6 did. It came out, and it came out in full butterfly glory. Um, <laughs> I just like that picture. I keep it up. We, 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 I printed it out, put it up next to one of the Perl 6 guys at work. Um, but Perl 6 was reaching for the stars. And, and, and you know, it's a sister language here to Perl 5, um, <laughs> for better or for worse. Uh, no, I, I gave this talk in Brussels and nobody got this reference. I guess they just didn't get this movie over there. Um, so anyway. <laughs> but Perl 6 really is awesome, okay? And, and I like to use this picture to describe Perl 6 because I think it's very accurate. Um, if, if you look, that ostrich is so happy to have Perl 6. Just <laughs> overjoyed. But that llama right there, He's kind of pissed. I don't know. Maybe he's a grumpy old Perl 5 programmer. It's hard to tell. And then actually, what is going on in that back thing? Is she, is she crying? Is she getting ready to vomit? Is she laughing? I don't know. We don't know. But that's OK, because Perl 6 is awesome. That's all you need to remember. And that's it. So, so I, I love this Larry quote. Perl was always designed to be an evolving language. I think that is totally true. And I think that, that just some of the stuff you've heard today about the various parts of the community you can see that, that, that it is an evolving language. Things get passed on. There's a maturity in the community. We, we care about backwards compatibility, but we also care about moving forward. Um, and I really do truly love Perl, okay? I, I really, really do. I can, I can hate on it all I want, but I think, you know, I hate on it out of love. Um, and, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that programming languages never do die. They never go away. I mean, like, COBOL is still there. Fortran is still there. Like, it, th these things never go away because, people are always continuing to make money off of them. And, and, and we, we have to sort of, we, nah, yeah. they're never gonna go away, it's, it's cool. And Perl is actually <laughs> retro. This is what I wanna, th this, this is the message I want, okay? Perl is retro, and retro is cool. So, so we, can, we, can, we can enjoy Perl, and we can enjoy the old style, we can enjoy the new style. There's, there's a huge, uh, uh, a wide um, spectrum uh, that we can have, so anyway. That's it, and I see that I'm way out of time, so <laughs> I'm gonna pass it on back to Sawyer. All right, uh, we have a fantastic keynote waiting for you, Damien Conway. You have five minutes, a quick break, just head out, go to your bathroom, I know I will, get some refreshments, not at the same time, it's unsanitary, and we'll see you back here in five minutes, thank you.